guys, it's Alex, and today I've got a pretty cool video for you guys. Today we're on a fishing mission, and a quick fishing mission at that. We've got about three hours to fish, and then a rain system is going to move in and pretty much sit down in the Tennessee Valley and dump about eight or nine inches of rain on top of what we've already got. So today's fishing mission is gonna be interesting for two reasons. Number one, all of that rain that we've been having has muddied up our lakes really really bad i mean it has been a tremendous amount of rain um, and the fish are just not really having it just because of all the influx of rain but then number two it's pretty cold outside as of right now we just hit 40 degrees and it is 12 o'clock so not only do we have dirty water but we've got cold dirty water so it's going to be a grinder i'm not going to lie it's going to be a grinder but i'm staying positive i'm not going to say i'm not going to catch fish because there's always a chance that you are um, but just in my mind i know that i'm probably going to need to adjust um, to that muddy water i'm going to need to adjust to that cold water and i'm going to just have to grind 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 and not give up and try to catch some fish so that's what we're doing today and hopefully you guys will enjoy today's episode Alright guys, so here we are. It is just a tad chilly outside if you cannot tell. Um, I am pretty racked up here. But uh, we're going to see what we can do, get done. The water clarity is actually not too horribly bad. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, I think it's just because there is so much flow right now coming through all these lakes. All the dams are pretty much opened up as wide as they can go to accommodate all the rain that we're gonna get over the next few days. So that can be a good thing and a bad thing. The good part of it is there's a ton of current. It means that those fish are gonna sit up on things like bluff walls, rock points, things like that and sit there and feed. But then number two, it can cause, like I said, uh, really bad water clarity, but where I'm at right now isn't too bad. So I'm paddling across the lake here. I'm gonna go fish. A point it's kind of a main lake point right where the river channel bends I'm gonna fish the outside bend and then the inside bend just doing a little Texas trick to kind of start off something slow uh, cover some water and then maybe adjust from there depending on what I see I need to do so yeah let's uh, paddle over here and get to work Alright guys, so just a little update here. I kind of took a break, changed up my GoPro battery, tied me on a lipless crankbait, started fishing some more uh, shallow areas. I saw some shad breaking in the back of some pockets and on kind of like the main lake where it shallows up. So I've tied on this lipless crankbait. I'm going to start kind of fishing some of these more shallow areas, curving some more water and seeing if I can get a reaction bite out of these fish. Not got any bites yet, but it seems closer that we get to this rain event moving in the closer we get to the end of the day these fish are becoming a lot more active which gives me hope i mean it could be one of those things and i say this a lot this time of year it's a time and deal i mean i could hit a 15 or 20 minute stretch and just catch a boom 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 so uh just going to keep on fishing here kind of breaking down the water i'll tell you one thing today guys that is like super super key about me being out here is the gear that I actually have on. Um, days like this, you got to have good warm clothes. You got to have good gear. It'll keep you dry. It'll keep you warm. And you know, I'm not saying that you got to go buy. There he is. That's actually pretty good. Go. 
But like I was saying, you don't have to go buy an AFCO rain suit, but I would definitely look into it if you're in the market for a rain suit because it's going to keep you warm on days like today and allow you to come out here and catch little chunk nasty dudes like that. That dude is a chunker. But uh, glad I switched up to that lipless crankbait, like I said, just to be able to cover a bit more water a bit more quickly and try to put some fish in the boat. So I'm going to keep at it here. I'm going to keep throwing this lipless crankbait. I think you know one is not a pattern but something just told me get shallow get up next to cover throw something loud and red like that lipless crankbait just because of the cloud cover and everything like that and hopefully we can put a few more fish in the kayak like that one right there see you later bud fish just moved up probably a little bug bass getting ready to go you know really really early pre-spawn and another one on that little lipless thanks bud All right guys, so let's talk about some of the key factors that helped me get the few fish into the kayak that I did today. Obviously number one was the bait that I was throwing. I started out the day throwing a chatter bait, mixing in the Texas rig here and there. Then I switched over to a square bill, mixing in the Texas rig here and there, and then finally ended up on the lipless crankbait. The reason I did that is because I moved into a very shallow area and it seemed to me that I kind of hit that feeding window for those fish today. I said earlier on in the video that really this time of year it can be a timing thing and you'll hit a window in which the fish want to feed and when i turned that corner and kind of got onto that flat the fish started to kind of move around i started to see some fish bust some uh, shad start to pop and i kind of told myself alex you just need to tie on a lipless crankbait and go to throwing it because this time of year when you're in those kind of flat areas you're in those shallow areas a lipless crankbait can be a very very deadly tool the one that i was throwing in particular was the strike king kvd red eye shad this is the half ounce version in rayburn red this is also the two tap version so instead of having all the little beads in it it has one tungsten ball that gives it that sound right there. Um, I really like that two tap version. It's just a little something different. So when they've seen a thousand lipless crankbaits, you can go through and throw this oftentimes behind people and catch fish that they did not catch. The only thing that I did was upgrade those treble hooks to an EWG style treble hook. I do that on all of my hard baits. I just don't trust stock hooks on about anything out there on the market right now. 
That hook was really key because as you guys noticed, both of those fish that I caught um, only had one treble hook in them. And then that big one that I actually hooked only had one treble hook in them when it come up beside the kayak. So that tells me that those fish were really just slapping at this thing. They didn't really get a good look at it. They were using more of their lateral line. And this, when they saw that flash of that bait, that red flash, they would slap at it and try to kill it. And then that red color, that Raven Red was key today because it was an overcast, muddy water kind of conditions. And as you guys know, I talked about this a few days ago in a muddy water fishing video, red on those cloudy muddy water situations just tends to be the best color to go with. Now as for rod and reel, as always for my small body crankbaits and lipless crankbaits under half an ounce, I was fishing my G-Rod Game Changer, seven foot medium crankbait rod. I had that paired with my Lose Custom Pro 6-8 gear ratio and then some 10 pound copolymer. This is my go-to setup for all of my moving baits like my small body crankbaits and stuff like that. Another key factor in today's video and it really really came in clutch was my new anchor. So you guys know I uh, put an anchor wizard on my kayak a few days ago and went and picked me up an anchor at the academy and that thing come in clutch today. There was a little bit of a wind and so every time I needed to stop all I had to do was drop that anchor and it would stop me. And I, honestly guys like being new to the kayak world I did not realize how pivotal something like an anchor could actually be and I feel like a few of those fish that I caught today I would not have caught them if I wasn't able to stop myself with my anchor. So that is really really awesome that I've got that thing now and I want to give again a big shout out to Westbrook Supply for getting me hooked up with that thing. But yeah, that's kind of what happened today. Um, it was, I told you guys it was gonna be a grinder and it was. I got three bites. I kind of hit that window pretty much perfectly when I hit that flat um, and it really was a window. The fish started moving around, the shad started popping. I uh, caught the few that I did and it was like someone hit a switch. They just turned off. The shad quit popping, the birds moved out of the area and it just kind of died on me. And really I think that it has a lot to do with the pressure change coming off of this front because we actually have a cold front moving in with a ton of rain behind it and tonight we're gonna get something like five six seven inches more rain on top of what we've already got but yeah as always guys thank you for watching if you've got any questions or comments please go leave them in the comment sections down below if you're new to my channel make sure you hit that like subscribe and notification bell it'll let you guys know when i put all out all of my videos and it'll really help me out also go down in the description i have links to all my partners like afco g rob I'll link everything that I threw today. You guys can go check it all out down below. But as always, you guys are sweet. And thank you for watching.